Hey guys, what is up? And today we're gonna talk about the latest trend in smartphones that is the mid range smartphone market. So guys, these days we find ourselves in the middle of high price smartphones, mainly around the thousand dollar mark, which isn't possible for everyone to afford. And with that, people have been found looking for cheaper phones with good specifications, which if you look back 2-3 years was not possible given the fact that manufacturing companies weren't even considering upgrading their mid-range lineup with good specs but that changed over the course of the last year or so with companies introducing good mid-range smartphones companies like Xiaomi producing their huge lineup of cheap but great spec phones which helped them capture the huge Indian market being the number one seller for India for a long time now. Seeing this, Samsung also changed their strategy towards their mid-range lineup by first killing the J series which wasn't fruitful at all at first and now replacing that with their M series in India which already has proved fruitful when phones like the M20 and M30 getting sold out in the first few hours of their release as they offered quality specs like better battery life and introducing the infinity designs to them like the infinity U and V and now recently releasing the M40 which had an infinity O display cut out on the left side of the screen that all leads us to this video's topic which is the new updated Galaxy A lineup which has massively been improved by including great specs that weren't introduced before their series includes models like starting up from the very very cheap galaxy a10 a20 a30 and on to the galaxy a80 currently and the galaxy a90 which is coming really shortly ahead in the year all are great smartphones with their price tags justifying their quality as the model i have today in my hand is the galaxy a30 which is in the midst of all the Galaxy A models with this model costing around roughly $230 with it offering great specs I have personally used it for about a month now and I am pretty impressed with, with its quality that the phone offers if we start off with the display it is a 6.4 inch super AMOLED HD panel with infinity U cutout in the middle of the screen for the camera cutout and having some quite some less bezels it is a really good looking phone given the fact that uh, there is a notch in the screen which I wasn't personally liking but since I've used it for about a month now I've gotten used to it. If you take a look at the back you can see it, there's a glass back but that isn't true in fact it is plastic uh, like a glass back for which Samsung calls it plastic back which absolutely doesn't make sense by the name of it but it is actually true because it looks like glass but it is plastic so so which definitely means that they are trying to provide that premium look while also cutting corners on the price because a glass bag would take a lot of it on the price the galaxy a30 comes with android 9.0 straight out of the box loaded with samsung's latest ui skin one ui which enhances the performance of the phone very good as it is also very light and with less bloatware as it is meant for phones with large displays and one handing experience as for the internals it comes with an Exynos 7904 which is a 14 nanometer chip designed for mid range phones from Samsung themselves which performs quite well in real life and scores an average mid range score of 978 in the single core department and 3369 in the multi core department in it while testing it out in Geekbench 4. This chipset coupled with 4GB of RAM provides a quite a smooth experience if you have a very moderate use. The phone that I have has 4GB of RAM otherwise there is also a 3GB variant as well. As for the GPU that is present in it, it is a Mali G71 MP2 GPU and the games I play on it perform really good even heavy games like PUBG Mobile uh, runs it on medium settings easily without lag even while screen recording this from Samsung's own built-in screen capture software it had zero effect on the performance of the game I played another game on it Dragon Ball Legends and screen recorded it as well and it also had zero lag while doing this screen recording so overall I would say if you would want to game on this device as a secondary thing then you would be completely fine besides the fact that it does heat up after extensive gaming sessions and does drain battery life in those extensive gaming sessions. It would also be advisable to close any other apps operating in the memory while playing 
to ensure an absolute load free gaming experience on the phone otherwise app opening times are good and are slow this phone has a dual back camera lens the main is a 16 megapixel camera and the second one is a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera for scenarios in which you need to fit a lot of content camera performance on this is pretty good but that statement can only be said with good lighting conditions where there is enough daylight to, or artificial light to lighten up those highlights in the backgrounds photography in low light is not good at all still there is hope that samsung might release a night mode on this phone as well since the galaxy a50 has received the night mode that was also present on the samsung galaxy s10 plus and other flagships from samsung after the software date so the video performance on this phone is similar to the picture quality it needs to be in good lighting conditions to provide good quality videos as it shoots 1080p at 30 frames per second both from the rear camera and from the front camera the battery on this device is also good and could easily last a day with its 4000 mAh battery with it with moderate usage throughout the day samsung has finally introduced fast charging to this lineup with a 15 watt hour charger the same one you find on the s10 series as well as type c connectivity which is also a big relief it does have a headphone jack and a fingerprint scanner mounted on the back side of the phone the base storage options on this phone vary as there is a base variant with 3 gigabytes of ram and 32 gigs of storage and a 4 gigabyte variant and a 64 gigabyte storage variant as well which i currently have with me it also has expandable storage in the form of micro sd card and it also has dual sim slots for connectivity so overall this is a very good phone for its price and has really good features and could easily be recommended to someone who who has a budget around 200 to 250 dollars i can't complain a lot about this phone given the fact that it's price and i think samsung has done the right move towards this lineup anyways guys thanks for watching my coverage of this phone if you liked it then do remember to give it a like and do subscribe i'll be seeing you guys in the next video which will be covering the upcoming galaxy note 10 and i'll catch you guys in that video peace